Do you want to become a certified cybersecurity architect? If so, you are in the right place. In today's video, I will provide you with a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide to pass SC100 exam completely for free. By the end, you will have a clear roadmap and access to all the essential study materials such as learning paths, documentation, practice case studies and exams. To kick things off, we will start with official study guide. And I know, maybe you are eager to already start. You want to pass the certification as fast as possible. And studying exam objectives takes time. But it's very important. Notice that this certification was changed recently. At least, as I'm recording this video, it was changed in July 2024. And that's the issue with Microsoft certification in general. They are going to make the changes frequently. Or other than other organizations that provide you with the certification exams. Let's take a look for example on CompTIA. There are many, many exams that you can take on CompTIA. And if I click on any of them and we scroll a little bit down, hopefully there should be there should be more information about the exam. Yeah, here it is. Here is an exam code. Do you see this unique numbering? This is all for all CompTIA certification. So I have security plus at least for now. And if I scroll down, we should see that this is here are the exam codes. So if they are going to make any changes to the CompTIA certification, do something different, make some modules different, the exam structure is uh, that add something or remove something, it will be changed, but it will be changed with, with those codes. So you know when you are learning on Comp for CompTIA, they will provide you with the codes. You, you know the course is designed specifically for this exam code. That's not the same with Microsoft certifications. We don't have something like this. You have SC100 and that's it, nothing else. So you need to always verify that if you are learning something, it's actually going to be on the exam. And the best way, and honestly, the only way is to go through this and see what are the most recent changes and if that applies to the study materials that you are learning. That's why it's time well spent. And once you know what you are studying for, you can find the material covering these objectives. And the absolutely best way, especially if you don't mind reading, it's Microsoft Learn. And I'm not telling you this because it's free, but because it's updated. That's the most important part. They will be always up to date. And before I show you, Actually, in this page as well, you will find study resources, documentations, you can uh, follow the community, or you can find some videos. The Microsoft Learn that I'm suggesting that you learn are right here. Design solutions that align with security best practices and priorities. You have design security operation identity and compliance capabilities design security solution for applications and data, and lastly, design security solution for infrastructure. Four modules covering the exam objectives on the SC100. Microsoft Learn is brilliant because after each section that you go through, they have few exam questions. Usually it's about five of them and you can answer them and see if you did really understand the exams, objectives, or the knowledge that was presented to you before. And gives you the room if you want to revisit the material as well. Which brings me to the next resource on my list. Practice assessment. Each Microsoft certification has a case study. Usually it's two case studies. Since you are watching this video, I assume you already have the prerequisite certifications and you already took one before. If not, Pay very good attention. You can earn a lot of points if you get this case study questions correctly. On this GitHub repository, you will find what I'm talking about. There are case studies. And if I click on any of them, 
I will be presented with some introduction. So this time it's a Tailwind Traders, so it's some made up company which has some organ organization structure, some design in the cloud or in the on-prem environment and you need to design a correct solution for their needs. Uh, sometimes it's the conto, so it doesn't re really matter. But here you have the current state for this organization and there are a few design tasks that you are asked for. So the one of the question is what what could they will train us to do to enforce privileged user to require MFA for all cloud access. So this could be, for example, conditional access. If you lack any knowledge and you are not sure, search for it on Google. With Microsoft certification, you can actually use official documentation during the exam in some instances. Therefore, it's very important to get familiar with Microsoft documentation itself. And once you are done, it's time to test your knowledge with some hands-on practice. And the GitHub repository that we have seen will also provide you with some hands-on labs. So if we go back on this GitHub repository, there is another folder called labs. Let's click on this and you have multiple lab scenarios that you can practice and exercise your knowledge. So let's click on one of them, conditional access, I mentioned this. And this lab, you have discovered that employees are accessing Microsoft 365 from unknown locations. And your solution is to restrict access from insecure unknown location and require strong authentication for apps containing sensitive information. And here are also the steps. How can you implement such solution? So open Microsoft Edge, go to Microsoft Entra and so on. If you don't have the lab set up, I also made another video covering how to set up your M365 environment and you can use this for this as well because you will have the a Microsoft Entra IDP2 license for two months and that's plenty of time for you to learn the exam objective for cybersecurity architect. Actually, there is one more resource that you can use to practice your knowledge and that's Microsoft Defender for Cloud Applied Skill Challenge. Microsoft Defender for Cloud is a key solution mentioned many times in this certification. It's very important that you understand Defender for Cloud in depth. This assessment will give you some hands-on experience, which is crucial, at least for me, if I want to retain the information for a longer period of time. And that should be the main goal, right? It shouldn't be some piece of paper that you will put on your CV, but you want to gain the knowledge and the skills that you can apply in real world scenarios. And that's applied skills what are designed for. There are multiple steps, multiple modules that you need to complete. So here are examine Defender for Cloud, the regulatory compliance standards, you will enable Defender for Cloud, you will create Log Analytics workspace, which is used for data retention, you will configure it, you will explore just-in-time virtual machine access, Azure Key Vault, and all those solutions, all those solutions are many times presented on the exams as one of the possible answers. So knowing them in depth will be very beneficial to you. All right, next, before I schedule the exam itself, I always go through some practice tests. They are usually paid, but again, you can find one for free provided by Microsoft. It has 50 questions, similarly worded as you would see on the exam. This is how it looks actually. You have the questions at the beginning and four possible answers. So at this case, we need to recommend a centralized logging solution for cloud resource. The solution must align with Microsoft Cloud Security Benchmark. See, that's what we have in uh, Applied Skills and must be able to monitor application, virtual machines and databases. What should you include in the recommendation? And there are four possible answers. So in this case, it's an Azure monitor and you can immediately check the answer and see if you answered correctly. And if not, 
There are also these links provided to you to the official documentation page. Again, visit them, see if there are more information available which you could have missed. Also, if you are looking for another free resource, you could potentially use ChatGPT, but be very careful and double check the answers. Not always the information provided to you from ChatGPT is accurate, especially if you are using the free modules. You can structure your prompt like this and it will provide you with the question. So let's see, in the context of zero trust security model, which of the following is a key principle? And here are the four possible answers. I think the correct answer is B, always assume breach. So let's press B and it will tell me correct explanation is right here. And I'm provided with another question as well, but you can always take and Google and see what is the answer from the Microsoft documentation itself. So in here, zero trust, use list privilege, assume breach, here it is. So this time the chat GPT provided us with correct answer, but not always it could be the case. So be very cautious with it. All right, now you are basically done. You can try to look for some videos on YouTube. I personally love John Savills, but for example, his SC100 study cramp is outdated. So I'm not going to include it on the list, but hopefully he will make an update soon. All right, when you go through all of this, you might feel like you are ready. You will schedule the exam, you go to the exam center or take it from home, you get the first question and it's for something you barely know or heard of. How I provided you with all the materials and told you it's enough and it kind of is because it's expected that you not only do the Microsoft Learn, for example, reading all the modules and the sections, it's not enough. Many times you will encounter external links to Microsoft documentations where you can learn certain topics in more depth. But nobody wants to read the documentation or even remember everything from it, at least I don't. That's not even the goal as you have the access to documentation during the exam. But it's expected that you will visit those links and learn the most important parts as well because they will occur on the exam. That's why I have one last resource which includes many topics that could be included on the exam. So in here we have the option to download the updated from December 2023 and to end security architecture framework. So I click on this and new PowerPoint presentation will be downloaded. And once it does, I will show you what is available on the presentation. So the presentation, it's kind of long. It has 95 slides at the moment and it's covering different topics. So if I'm going to click on any of these, uh, here we have current security architecture, security adaptation framework, and I would advise you to visit all these slides, at least if you are not going to visit the Microsoft documentation at all, go through of them. Some of these slides I like, so Age of Empires, the game of my youth <laughs> so uh this is this is awesome and they explain the security measurements on this the very important part though not only read the slides but there's this if i show you key takeaways and here is also another more detailed information uh that is presented for you on the slide. So if I scroll here, so we have key takeaways as well for that. Here, 
what is the zero trust commandments the 10 laws of cybersecurity risk and you will find many many informations in these slides as well and for me personally i would now that i have passed the sc100 i would spend much more time reading through all of this i cannot tell you which slides uh, were presented on the exams for me or even the questions but yeah i, I would i would spend more time reading through through these slides and it's not that bad maybe 90 slides seems like a lot but if you do 10 of them each day in in 10 days you are done and that's it now you have everything to pass cybersecurity architect exam from microsoft make sure to make your personal notes and again you will find all the links in the description keep learning good luck with your studies and subscribe and like if you enjoy the tips.